Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanna share three fun and easy activities to help students really understand those teen numbers. Now, the numbers 11 through 20 are mostly focused on at the end of the year in kindergarten and definitely towards the beginning of the year in first grade. It's a pretty big number sense skill, so I wanted to offer just some fun and easy activities for you to use with your students. If you've seen my videos before, then welcome back. And if you are new here, my name is Susan Jones. I am a former K through two literary teacher and first grade teacher who now spends a lot of time here on YouTube sharing tips, ideas, and videos just like this for teachers just like you. So if you're ready to dive in, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. Okay, activity number one when teaching teen numbers is more of a tip than an activity, but it's going to be to make sure that you are using either a 10 frame or base 10 blocks. When you're introducing these teen numbers to your K or one students, you're going to wanna to make it hands-on. And really the main thing we are teaching our kids when we're talking about these teen numbers is we want them to recognize that, you know, 15 is actually a 10 and five ones. We really want them to understand that that first one there is not a one, instead the value is actually a 10. So using manipulatives like a 10 frame or like a rod like this one is a really good visual for them to understand that. To do this with your students, you'll really want to go ahead and orally say a teen number aloud, let's say 13, and then you will want them to actually physically make it on their board, either using a 10 frame like here, they will first fill in all of the numbers to 10, and then they will show the next three. You can have them either do this next three on the side, or you can of course do another 10 frame, so you have 20 there and you can have them fill in those three at the beginning of the second 10 frame as well. You would do something similar with blocks like this or connecting cubes, but when they're making that number, you would actually want them to finally connect the connecting cubes when you make a 10. And for this, I wouldn't just have them grab a rod. They would have to count up 10 individual ones, and then once they make a 10, they'll exchange it for a rod. Just for some other examples of how I would have students do this. When students have done this enough times with you saying the number and building it so you can kind of walk around and check, I would definitely move this into an easy independent or partner center. Here's an example of an independent center I have in the SJT Math Club. It is called Teen Number Build and Write. And here all students do is actually flip a teen card. They will build it on their mat either using a connecting cubes like I mentioned earlier or they can just use these rods right here and then they would write underneath the equation. So let's say 14 is 10 plus 4. This takes it to that next level where they can actually see the equation 10 plus 4 equals 14. Okay, the second activity I like to do to have students review their teen numbers is called Mystery Number Showdown. Now, Showdown is a fun and easy game that you can do with all sorts of different skills. I actually think it's a Kagan structure or game or something that I learned about years ago. And all students need is their own mini whiteboard and a dry erase marker. Now, to use it with this skill, you will want to play Mystery Number. And that is where I will tell students, I'm going to think of a teen number and I'm going to give you some clues. You will have to guess what number I'm thinking of and see if you can find the correct mystery number. So for example, I might say, this teen number is greater than 12, but it's less than 15. And then I'd have students think and they'd be like, oh wait, you know, it could be two different numbers. So I might give them another clue and I might say, this teen number is odd. And then what students would be doing is pretend this is a whiteboard, it's actually just a piece of paper. But they would be writing down, they'd be keeping it a secret, and then I would count down when I see that everybody's ready. I usually have them put their marker down when they are ready to show me. And I will say three, two, one, showdown, and then they flip it and they show me what their answer is. It's just a really quick way for me to take a quick scan of all the whiteboards, see kind of who's got it, who doesn't have it. And again, it's an easy way to see like, okay, if all my students got that wrong or most of them, we need to keep working on this. If there's only one or two that keep getting this wrong, then I might be able to make a little small group. It's just a quick informal assessment that I can take. Then of course, students could wipe their board and you would play again with a few different mystery numbers. Okay, and last but not least, the third activity I have for practicing teen numbers is called Take, Make, and Tally. 
Now this is a fun activity and I even have a little freebie for you. Freebie alert, freebie alert. But I like this one because in the first activity, you are actually giving them the number that they have to go ahead and make. You want to say the number aloud 15 and have them show you what 15 looks like. But in this activity, it's gonna be a little bit different. This is a game that students can play either independently or with a partner. And all you need to do is go ahead and put 20 different cubes, erasers, or bears, something like that, any little manipulative into a brown paper bag. What students will have to do is close their eyes and they will reach into the bag and they will take some out of their bag. Now, if these are cubes or erasers, you might want to have students go ahead and use a 10 frame to fill it in. Or if it's cubes, you can have them stack it up to show that 10 and then more. So students will actually have to figure out how many cubes they have here. So take, they take them out make, they're going to make the number with these manipulatives. And then over here on this recording sheet, they're going to tally what number they actually made. Now I do explain to my students that this game is all about making some teen numbers. So if they happen to reach in and their little hand can only pull out seven cubes and they fill it in and see that they haven't made a teen number yet, then I actually have them go ahead and take a second draw. So I will have them take some more cubes until they make a teen number. Once they have tallied off the number that they created, they will put all the manipulatives back into a bag and they will repeat this until they have made five tally marks on their recording sheet for one of the numbers. So they may have reached 12 first or 13 first, but they will keep taking, making, and tallying until one of the columns has five tally marks. Now this is a pretty simple game for students to go ahead and use, but if you've been around for a while, you know that I love using games for the classroom, especially to review math skills. And in this one, students have to actually take the number, they have to build the number to see what number they've made with all these cubes. And in doing so, they're either filling up a 10 frame or making a rod. And then they have to identify that number on their tally sheet. There's a lot of little skills at play and I love that. Now, if you do want to try this out with your students, I actually made the little sheet here completely free for you. So you can go ahead and grab that down in the description below. So there you have three fun activities to help your students practice those teen numbers and really get an understanding for the fact that those teen numbers are just a 10 and some extras. As always, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did so I know and make sure you grab your freebie down in the description. Make sure you subscribe to my channel because every Thursday and Sunday morning I upload a brand new video just for you. And if you have any ideas or topics that you want me to make videos about, drop them down in the comments. I read the comments every single week. And when teachers start asking for specific things over and over, I definitely like to make a video to address it. Thanks everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.